Hello everyone, my name is Claudia. Welcome to Clone Knits. I did a video recently that was talking about stranded knitting. It was six tips to get better stranded knitting or something like that. And people seem to have loved it because I got a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful comments. Thank you so much for commenting if you did. And people had more questions. So we're gonna answer your questions today. And I really, really love when you have so much interest in the subject that you actually want to know more. If you have not seen my six tips for better stranded knitting, please go check it out first and then come back here because you might have questions here that are answered there, etc. Today we're going to spend time doing the techniques that I mentioned in the last video. So I'm going to show you how I cross my yarns, why I don't cross them very often. I'm going to talk about magic loop. I'm also going to talk about the jogless join method, which I don't do. And I'll tell you why as well. All the timestamps are on the video so you can go to the section you would like to know more about. And I'll see you back in a few minutes. Let's talk about why I don't like to catch my floats. This is a little sample I made. There's no more than five stitches at a time of the pattern repeat. And on this side here, I did not catch my floats anywhere. This is what it looks like. On the other side here, uh, below this row here, I think it's pretty clear when I switched method, but below this row here, I caught my float every time I had two stitches in a row. So on the second stitch, I was catching my float, which is what some people like to do. And maybe it's my technique, but to me, this, even though I could probably make it a little bit better, to me, this will always have, sorry, this, this stitch is annoying me, so I'm going to try and tighten it. And I can't even tell where it's coming. Oh, here you go. Okay. Even when I see pictures of garments uh, that when people use this method, even on the pictures, on the videos, I can tell. Because even when you can't see the yarn behind right away, you can see that the stitches all have this sort of like weird puckering. And when you stretch it, it becomes even more apparent. Obviously, if you have very dark with very light, you're going to see the dark poke through or the light poke through. Whereas here, if I'm not stretching it, I cannot see light or dark poke through. Obviously, if I were to stretch it, I would see a little bit of the background color, which makes sense. But here, I don't even have to stretch it to see it. And then when I stretch it, it's even more obvious. Um, let's Let's cut into it to show you the two things next to one another so you'll see exactly what I mean by that. So, okay. All right, let's open this up. This is the difference. To me, it is very obvious which one is more aesthetically pleasing to me. Obviously, if you're doing this one and it works for you, please, please, please keep doing it. And here up top, I switched my method to only catching when I had more than uh, three stitches in a row. So here, when there was five stitches, I caught, and I think I did it down here as well. You can't really tell, that's much better, but if I look closely, I can see that little yarn poking through right here. Whereas here, there's nothing poking through. And it looks like this in the back. And this is what the um, no float me method looks like. And this, these are my floats that never cross. Let's talk a bit about how I would catch my floats. I'm gonna start with the method with the two yarns in two hands because it is the simplest, uh, I believe, or anyway, in my opinion. So if I have a long section of the left side yarn, I'm going to knit to the area I'm going to want to cross in the middle here, but it could be this stitch or this stitch, it doesn't matter. And now in order to catch this float, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come lay it as if I was gonna knit with it. Then I'm gonna lay my left yarn and then I'm gonna take it to the back so it's not knitted and go like this. 
So what happens is this yarn gets trapped underneath the pale yarn. Let's do it again. I enter the stitch. I do as if to knit with my right side color. Then I go to knit with my left side color and I take it out of the way. And now I can knit. And I'll keep going. And in the back here, you can tell that this little float was trapped underneath the pink. All right, let's do the same thing. But if you were to hold it, the both of them in your left hand, so I'm going to knit those first two colors. Again, my right yarn is always the same one. And that's the one I want to catch right now. So I'm going to go under and then instead of going to pick up the pale yarn, I'm going to have to go around over the right yarn and then go and pick it up here underneath and then I can pass it through. To me, it's a little bit similar to when you're doing a Norwegian pearl, that little motion. So again, through the stitch over the yarn under both and then bring it back around and scoop it. And again, the result will be the same. The little yarn here is woven through that stitch. And then the last way would be if I were to hold both yarns in my right hand. Okay, so if I'm holding both, I have my pale yarn in the right hand, I get to this stitch. And that's the one that I find the most tricky when I'm holding both yarns in the right. I have to take my dark yarn, go around, then I have to take my pale yarn, go around as well. And then what I like to do is use my thumb to bring the yarn back around because I want it to still lay above my pale yarn as I knit it. And then the main thing that's really important is here. There's a twist. We don't want to take off that twist. If we let that twist come off, the yarns kind of start twisting around each other. And then you're going to have to deal with that later. Whereas if you leave it as is with that twist here and you keep knitting with that pale yarn, what's going to happen is it is not twisted here. My yarns have not had a twist in them, but you've woven in the same way as you did when you were holding with the other hand. Again, because that one is always tricky. So knit one, I'm about to knit this one. I'm going to take my dark yarn, lay it, then take my pale yarn, lay it, and then bring that yarn back around, knit, and then keep knitting while that twist is still in there. I feel personally that when we get to those stitches, it is somewhat faster or more or easier in my opinion to just switch to doing that one stitch continental style. So even if you're doing color work that is two hand, uh, only with the right hand, let's say it would be simpler to just bring it to the left, do this, lay it around, bring it back, knit it, and then pick it back up from underneath. Oop, and keep knitting. So you can find your own way, obviously. So now let's catch the left side, which to me is more enjoyable than catching the right one. I'm going to knit two stitches. I'm going to enter the, the third. Again, I have five stitches here that I'm going to knit. And before I wrap this yarn, I'm just going to bring my finger forward so I can wrap behind 
that yarn and then knit underneath the two strands. And then when I knit the next one and the yarn is obviously behind, it will weave in this pale yarn right here, right at the base, right there. Again, let's do it again. It's very simple and it doesn't disrupt my flow whatsoever. So one, two, and then bring it forward. It can be all the way forward if you want. It doesn't matter. I just bring it a little forward enough so that the other yarn can wrap behind it. And then like this and let it go and keep knitting normally. So that's when you hold it in both hands. And like you see here, my yarn, it's a little bit more difficult to see in the pale yarn, but like it's here, it wo it wove in here and then it keeps going. All right, so if I'm gonna do it with both here on my left, I'll go one, two, and then I will simply go under this yarn to go pick up the next and then here over again like so and it's woven in again one two go under and pick up the yarn and then the top one here I don't know if you can tell but uh, this motion is much more fluid than uh, catching the left, uh, the right side float. Now, if I'm gonna do it with all the yarn in my right hand, I will go one, two. Then for the next one, what I'm gonna do is poke through. I'm gonna take my left hand to bring this yarn over my right hand needle, the, the one that's in the back. And then I'm gonna knit both, making sure that I don't bring this pale yarn forward through the loop and then keep knitting. So I'm not really continental knitting, but I'm using my left hand to bring it forward. Again, um, here, then here, one, two, poke. I mean, I could use my right hand to bring it forward, but since I'm already holding here with my right hand, it's easier to just take my left hand to pick it up. Come on, go somewhere else. To pick it up, lay it, and then knit through and keep going. And then sometimes they'll want to poke through like that. Just pull it a little bit. I'll come back. And that's it for catching floats without twisting your yarns. I also got a few comments on color dominance and how it is possible to not have any color dominance in your color work knitting. And I want to expand on that topic. It is absolutely true that you can have a work without color dominance. In order to not have any color dominance, you have to have exactly the same size stitches which if you always have one yarn running underneath the other, like in this hat, you will not be able to get exactly the same size stitches. If you can, well, I want to know your tricks because I haven't found anyone that can make the same size stitches when the color is coming from different places. But here I have started a little sample where you can see that my yarn is turning around each other. And that's the way that you can achieve non-color dominant knitting. And I believe that uh, Arne and Carlos are some of the people that you know teach that way of doing color work, which is absolutely fine. It's just different. And I want to show you how different it is so you can make your own decision. So if I were to want to have my stitches come always from the same place. Um, I would have to let go of my yarn every time I change color and then pick up that next color always the same way. Let's say I want my color to always come from underneath. I'm going to take this yarn and pick it up 
from underneath and then let go and pick it up from underneath and then let go and pick it up from underneath and let go and pick it up from underneath so first off for me that creates a lot of manipulation when I'm used to just leaving my strands like this and not at all move them if I were to do it with my right hand same thing I would have to let go and pick up from underneath like so and then the next thing that ends up happening you can probably guess is that my strands twist around each other so right now I'm starting to get a messy twist in my yarn like so and if I keep going very long like this it's just gonna keep twisting and twisting and twisting more and more and more there is a solution which is that after one round or maybe a half a round depending on how you want to deal with it I'm gonna start twisting the other way around so if I want to keep going and undo the twist then I'm gonna pick up my yarn from over here and then on the next color here I'm gonna pick it up uh, instead of from underneath from the this way I'm gonna come and pick it up this way so I'm gonna twist it over and again I'm gonna twist it over and over and then the twist is kind of gonna go in the other direction in my strands so what happens is the twist is gonna disappear here slowly but surely my my yarns are untwisting from one another okay and if my change of colors are consistent then you know from one row to the next um I'm going to twist, 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 untwist, 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 twist, 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 untwist, untwist, untwist. And it's perfectly fine. It's just something that I personally feel does not soothe my knitting style and what I want to achieve with my knitting. Um, if you want to try this and you like it, please go ahead and do it. I'm all for people doing what they love and what they uh, prefer. But for me, uh, the payoff of having exactly the same size stitches is not enough for um, all the manipulation I end up having to do when I use this technique. A few people wanted to know about this. This is the jog that happens when you knit in the round stranded i've said it before i believe but when you're knitting in the round you're not knitting a circle over a circle you're knitting a spiral so at some point you gotta you know change which row you're on and it creates this thing here i personally never mind that there is a jog because right now we're looking at it straight on but it's a cowl and the cowl will be worn however i can actually make sure that i put the jog in the back same thing for a hat or same thing for a sweater the jog will generally be at a you know shoulder line and underneath the arms but some people wanted to know how to do it and there is a way it was uh taught by patty lyons uh, she figured out this great way and to be honest i'm not really well uh, practiced because I don't like doing it I've never really worked on doing it properly which is why my jog still has a little like bigger stitches I think it would probably move during a, a good block and then it would show much less but it still is pretty good so the jog should be right here this is my beginning of the round marker and the jog should be here but as you can tell it's kind of much less apparent than this one where is it right here so right here the jog is quite obvious like this and this one is not as obvious so here's how you do this method again I learned it from Patty Lyons it is not my method but I absolutely love what Patty Lyons do go check her out on YouTube if you want more tips and tricks from her so I'm going to knit um, to the last stitch 
This is my I Got Rhythm cowl pattern. Okay, so this is my last stitch in my pattern. I am currently on row 15. So I'm knitting row 15. I'm going to end the row by knitting into the row below. So I'm going to lift the stitch here, put it on the needle and knit the color I'm supposed, which is my dark color right here. Perfect. Now though, if I keep doing that every round, it's going to create some sort of brioche pattern. It's going to create bulk and it's still going to be an obvious join. So what I'm going to do is put that stitch back onto my left hand needle and I'm going to re-knit it with the first stitch of the next row. So my next row is row 16 and row 16 starts with a light stitch. So I'm going to knit that with the light stitch. And that's where, you know, all the, maybe the little tension issues come from. So again, if I were to do it a lot, I would probably get much better at it. And now I'm going to knit all of row 16 and I'll meet you back at the, uh, at the joining place. All right. I'm getting towards the end of row 16, white, a dark. Now I'm at the last stitch, which is a dark stitch. I'm going to lift up this stitch, put it on the needle and knit it with the dark. Now I have to look at row 17, which is a light stitch. So I'm going to transfer it back to my left hand needle, and then I'm going to knit my light stitch and keep going. And that's how this join is going to happen. It's going to trap the other color behind, which, you know, hides the extra stitch that we made. All right, we're back at the beginning and here three in brown. And then now this one has to be in white at the end of row 17. Row 18 is a dark color, but let's assume it's a light for the purpose of this video. I would bring it back to the left. And then if I have to knit it again in the same color, I want to make sure that it's locked by twisting. So I'm bringing my color that I just knit underneath and then I'm locking it in place in order to be able to achieve another stitch here coming from the right side of my stitch. My yarn went back to the right side because I locked it with this wool and then I can keep knitting. And it looks like this on the inside. You can see this little twist that happens whenever I have to change yarn and it's the same one. It's kind of getting locked in place and it creates a pretty seamless join here. Like I said, though, you don't have to do it. You can do it if it really bothers you. Fair Isle knitters never worried about the join in their uh, in the round color work. Probably also a lot because they used a lot of steaks in order to hide that join, but that's a subject for another day. Here I'm working on Magic Loop and a lot of people have issues with that section creating a pucker when they turn the corner. Here's how I like to not get, here's how I like to prevent that from happening. I'll pull my needle. I'll start working. Let me see where I am at in my pattern. I have to do two white stitches. I'm not doing anything different here because I had a white stitch at the end of my needle and I have white stitches at the beginning of my needle. So it's following the same natural magic loop, you know, path. But then this yarn is three stitches away. And if I start knitting with it like this, what happens is this kind of cuts the corner and that's what creates a pucker or if the if the yarn was coming all the way for, to from here to here oftentimes it's going to cut the corner and create pucker so to prevent that i make sure that i bring my my uh wire parallel to my needle so it creates a path and then i pull 
on this wool here and I kind of tuck it here to make sure that I don't over pull on it and to make sure that it creates this beautiful line. So here, oops. And then keep going. I'll do it again. Oh, that's a great example. So I made three stitches in the white. I have to make my first stitch in the dark here. If I just knit that dark stitch and start knitting here, you see how my corner is no more. It's not a round anymore. It's like literally a cut across. So two things. First one is make sure that your yarn is really kind of hugging your work. So you're holding it against your work and then you can pull on your cable to create this path and then start knitting. If you're knitting it with the right hand um, here, same thing. I would pull on that cable here and just make sure that the length is enough here by probably holding it with my middle finger instead of my uh, ring finger uh, instead of my index finger and then keep knitting then same thing here the the white is coming from all the way here so i'm just gonna make sure that the continuation of the cable and this the needle is there to be honest, I really dislike working um, color work in Magic Loop. I would much rather just have the correct size needle for my work. That's it for today. There are more things that I could be talking about like ladder back jacquard or other techniques that you might be curious about. If so, please ask me in the comments if there are many people wanting certain techniques. I am always happy to do a deep dive on another subject or another technique or just show you a few things that I learned along my knitting journey. Maybe you would like to watch another video of mine so I'll suggest to you this one and I will see you very soon. Bye!